In collaboration with Brain Mind, let's talk about how to eat for optimal brain health. When one understands which foods are brain healthy versus brain unhealthy, we can try to plan our meals in a better way. But sometimes the devil is in the details. It's not just about what you eat, it's about how you eat the food. So there's three concepts I want to discuss. Number one, when it comes to eating, have you ever heard about the ELF diet? ELF, E-L-F. It's an important concept. ELF stands for eat less food. Too many times people eat way too much. Portion control and portion size is key. So try to understand serving sizes. Don't just look at the labels. Actually, try to keep track of the labels. A serving size of red meat, for example, is about the size of a deck of cards. It's about six ounces. A serving size of nuts is different depending on the nuts. Keeping track is key. Next, let's talk about two important concepts. The first is time-restricted eating. The second is intermittent fasting. Many times in media and online, we learn about these concepts, but these concepts are kind of melded together. Let's talk about the differences because they're extremely important, and it's the subject of our research. First, let's talk about time-restricted eating. In my clinical practice, we recommend our patients who are trying to follow a brain-healthy diet not just change what they eat, but when they eat it. As an example, having an early dinner and then having an extended period of fasting between dinner and breakfast may give the brain the best chance for success. Why is this? When people eat food, especially carbohydrates, the body then uses those carbohydrates for fuel. The brain can only use two types of fuel glucose or sugar, which are breakdown products from carbohydrates, or fats, specifically ketone bodies. And we'll talk about more of that in a second. So for example, if you stop eating at 5 p.m. at night, and then the next morning at 7 a.m. you start again, that's a 14-hour period of time-restricted eating. Somewhere between that 12 and 13-hour mark, the body is really running out of carbohydrates. So it goes and defaults back to a cleaner burning fuel called ketone bodies. And once we hit 14, 15, or even 16 hours, that's when we can possibly press the brakes on brain aging during that time. So let's talk about cleaner burning fuel, let's talk about time-restricted eating, and talk about frequency. How many times a week should someone try to pursue time-restricted eating? Well, unfortunately, we don't know the answer to this. In our clinical research, we've tried to study this, but the jury's still out. Is 12 hours enough? I don't think so. Is 14 to 16 hours a better target? I believe yes. Is 16 to 18 hours a better target? Well, for some people who can handle it, possibly yes. But we need to do more research to understand. Should someone do time-restricted eating every single day? In our clinical practice, we don't exactly recommend that. And while, again, the research is pending, we recommend in our clinical practice four to five days a week periods of time-restricted eating of 14 to 16 hours between dinner and breakfast. We do this slowly over time. Certain people have no issues at all with fasting. Other people get headaches. They feel sick. They're not focused. Usually over time, if someone slowly increases the interval between dinner and breakfast, they're able to tolerate longer periods of this time-restricted eating. So I'm using a very specific term, but let's transition to intermittent fasting. My definition of intermittent fasting is different. It's when someone truly fasts for an extended period of time, usually at least maybe even up to 24 hours. There are some very interesting emerging studies that will hopefully clarify what the optimal time to time restrict your eating versus fast. Uh, some of my patients who want more of a jump start to not just necessarily lose weight, but lose body fat, have adopted time restricted eating plus intermittent fasting at least once a week. So me personally, every other week, I try to take on a 24 to 28 hour fast every other weekend, and then four or five times a week hit 14 to 16 hours. And I believe that during periods of ketosis, the brain is using a backup fuel and the brain is aging at a slower rate.